everybody. Sorry about those technical difficulties. I hit the right buttons and turned the right knobs, and I believe things are functional now. Fingers very much crossed. Yeah, it's famous last words, as yes. Matani would say. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have sound. So let's do that again. Yes. So, uh, just just so everyone knows, I'm the only test person here. Look, she's indeed a goon. Mm -hmm. So it's not just test people that struggle with life. Yeah, no, I think, if anything, the incompetence is pretty heavily on the left side of the screen so far today. So, yeah, maybe we should reconsider our preconceptions of goons and test. Maybe, I don't know. I doubt it, though. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, maybe we can talk a bit about uh, Brave later. But, um, maybe. I don't know if you've read any of the stuff about Brave Bits yet. and pieces. Um, that's a that's a lot of money that seems to be going out of them, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so, back to Tiamat, which I, I know I'm going to do the intro again, sorry guys. Uh, so the Zip is out. Uh, it's... I like the look of it, I like the feel of it, uh, however, it's not as strong as uh, the other yeah. detail. Yeah, the impression I got that the Svipple isn't as good of a fleet ship. Like the yeah. Amar one, people have been using it for, um, you know, like low set gangs and stuff like that. Um, you could actually make a decent, like, line ship out of it, sort of like people did with the... Uh, What's the um, Mimitar missile destroyer that Tess loved for a while? That's a great question. Anyways, uh, so that that wasn't necessarily the most successful doctrine in the world, but right. you can do well with the destroyer doctrines, and I think the Spipple would be a good choice. Or sorry, the um, the Amar one would be a good right. choice for that. The Spipple seems more towards solo PvP. I mean, I I've heard, yeah, I've heard people say that uh, it's not too bad in solo. Uh, I wouldn't know. Um, it seems to favor you being in a sharpshooter mode, the sniper mode, uh, yeah. more than anything. It doesn't seem to like going to other modes in terms of, I mean, it's not too bad, but uh, uh, Talwar, thank you. That's the one. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, I'm still looking forward to, to fooling around with it and figuring stuff out with it. I probably shouldn't do it with my hands. Um, but I don't know. It's okay, I guess. Yeah. The other the other big thing to come out of Tiamat, uh, the the things we were talking about last time, and everyone's been I guess hyped about for lack of a better way of putting it, the the Jovian slash sleepers slash drifters yeah. slash they're all the same thing I guess. Whatever the hell is going on, bad boys shooting at you in places you didn't expect, kind of thing. Yeah, things shooting at your structures where you're like, that's not a real person shooting my structures. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, and they definitely look good. Uh, I have to commend CCP on their design work with the Drifters. They're really... Like, I thought that with the four races and all the pirate factions and the hostels and stuff, CCP had basically run out of inspiration for spaceship design. You know? Nope. Drifters, a completely alien new thing. It's amazing. And they're the nicest ships I've ever seen. Yeah. Other than the Aglefar, because vertical ship supremacy. Yeah. Well, we have this Fipple now for that as well, and it's I know. proper modes. Uh, the other cool thing to kind of come out of uh, the whole Jovian mm -hmm. thing um, is the scope videos that CCP has yes. been airing on YouTube, which I'm a huge fan of. I don't know how you feel about them. I think they're fantastic. I think they've actually managed to engage people on the lore, which is something that I considered basically impossible to believe. <laughs> Like, you have to have so much background, and so much of that background is in, like, tech stories or you know, just stuff that's inaccessible or difficult to wrap your head around. But these scope videos, they're basically, like, punchy 24-hour uh, news uh, videos. They give you thing happened, thing happened, thing happened. What does this mean? And you get hooked, and you want to watch or what, the next what one. What could it mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. I like that it brings uh, it brings suspense and speculation to the game. I mean, this whole everything with the Jovians and the Sleepers and the Drifters—it's all been, you know, very. We've all been speculating since uh, pictures started cropping up on, on Reddit and on people's Twitters and whatnot, and trying to like figure out what is going on. And CCP's kind of took this suspicion that we've had and this interest that like all of Eve has had and just yeah. ran with it and been like, we don't know what it is either. Mysterious undertones. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that one of the big problems with Eve in the past, at least uh, when it comes to high sec and low sec, is that it didn't really feel like a living universe. 
you know, you had the players, obviously, but the faction people, the, the NPCs were, you know, practically faceless in every way. Right. And I agree. inert. Um, having NPCs that actually seem to go out and have motives, and it's like... Uh, one of the major World of Warcraft expansions, you know, it feels kind of like that in a way. Um, yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, one of the things that always kept me, uh, I mean, looking, thinking about other games is those, those, you know, teaser videos and those, uh, you know, all of those things that you get from other games, the trailers, right. the teasers, so, and even like, like you said, with the WoW videos, sometimes those lore videos, I'd be like, oh man, yeah. that's fascinating, like, you know. It's always interesting to see that kind of stuff, and I love that CCP has taken this idea and done it for themselves, because let's be honest, like, I mean, obviously, well, has, I think it has good lore, I've always thought that, yeah. so it kept me interested, well, until the Brass Lich King, and then I kind of stopped giving a shit, but, like, Fair Eve enough. actually has interesting lore, Yeah. and I didn't know until this video started happening. Yeah, likewise. It's something that's... You know, I assume that it must be bad because no one ever talks about it. But no, it's just been really poorly presented for years. Yep. Um, uh, spaceships are great and all, but having characters and entities with goals that actually exist in the game world, that's a new thing for EVE, I think, and uh, I, I enjoy it well, very much. From from their NPC perspective, definitely. Uh, yeah. But like from our pl from player perspective, that's always existed. True. So it's nice to see them, you know, add that into their into their gameplay. I mean, to be fair, I'd love to see a similar idea, like taking something like the scope and making a making one for for players. Yeah. Like well, and and Nullsec and what's going on. I mean, obviously, there's like tons of avenues for people yeah. to get information about Nullsec. But it'd be, I think, it'd be kind of cool to um, have a, a thing where, like, some person comes on and is like, oh, you know, goons moved to this system today. What does it mean? Speculation, 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 right? So I think that would be that would be fun. I think CCP has tried to do that sort of thing in the past with, like, uh, weekly or monthly updates, you know, and they'd split it in between, uh, you know, high sec and NPC stuff happening and uh, player stuff happening. Yeah. Um, but... It's one of those things that's really difficult to do if you leave it to, like, ISD. Like, ISD used to do that a lot. Yeah. Um, you'd have ISD reporters ask you about things. But you would inevitably get accused of bias. So oh, the reporters would focus on stuff that didn't matter so that no one would yell at them. So you'd have news reports about, like, Mining Corporation 1734 um, having a, an internal dispute. Yeah, because if you write a, a story about, I don't know, Test or Goon Swarm or NC Dot or whatever, you are going to go, oh, wow, look, CCP is displaying favoritism to this. They're drawing attention to this alliance. Um, everybody's going to want to go join that alliance now. So it's a difficult... Now Gurgoons. Yeah, well, it's a difficult place for CCP yeah. to be, you know. Um, I think that their approach of pretty much just looking at NullSec... And backing away and saying, you, you guys, guys do just, this. Yeah, fine, <laughs> sure, whatever, you know. Um, just don't make your space stations uh, into swastikas with the anchoring. Um, That's, uh, you bring up a good point. I never thought of it from that perspective. Yeah, it's it's a fine line that CCP has to walk, I think. They they did the best, I think, when, uh, you know, Asakai and BTAC-R happened, in that they... Um, they talked about the battle from a very neutral perspective... And they uh, sort of uh, um, delegated to the community to explain it. I remember right. uh, CCP did a lot of posting of um, one of our pieces on BTACR, or uh, they would uh, uh, the Eve News Twenty Four pieces, or so on. Um, right. Uh, that sort of stuff. Even the analysis of Nullsec has an impact on Nullsec, so. It's something that yeah. CCP can't really stick their face into, unfortunately. Yeah, that's one of those things. I mean, like I said, I didn't really think about it from that perspective. But yeah. uh, that makes much more sense as to why it's not a thing. Yeah. Um, so, other than that, uh, speaking of CCP, um, CCP has released a dev blog uh, talking about new player experiences and uh, new player opportunities. Yes. Uh, so we've we've talked about this a lot, uh, obviously over the last couple months because all of the patches have 
you know, in some way, shape, or form, most of them have touched on this and fixed some of those basic things that we were like, why is this just happening now? Things right, like, right. you know, the skill cues and the the um, the clone, like removing the, the cost for all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, I mean, CCP is very dedicated to new players. Yeah, and it seems to be as soon as they switched over to the new executive producer. All of these long-standing things that bug most people about the game, or at least uh, were uh, blocks to incoming new players. Like, why do I have to wait? Why do I have to pay this fine just to have more skill points? What's going on here? Why are clones so complicated? All that stuff is being knocked out one by one, and this is another yep. big step. And this is another one that Low Space brought up, which actually I was about to get to, and you jumped the gun! Low space, How but uh, there's 30 day trials now available instead of the 14 yeah. day trials. So, I mean, all around, like, they're really, really gunning to bring new players yeah. into the game. It was one of those things where I didn't think, like, I thought that everyone that was playing Eve would always just, these were the people that were playing Eve, and that was it. Right. You just were shuffling those, the deck forever. And that those big battles would happen, and they would bring some people back. Uh, oh, is it IO space? I'm sorry, it looks like an L here. I apologize. Um, but, uh, sorry, I, it looks like an L on my screen, I'm sorry. Uh, um, okay. I forgive you. But, um, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I, I get what you were saying, though, is that, you know, you have the battles and they occasionally bring people in, but those people run into the same wall that they had before and they eventually fritter out. I, I always saw Nullsec, and I still kind of do see it as, you know, basically the same thirty or 40,000 people just shuffling the deck, joining new alliances, you know, joining new corporations. And you can see that in the, like, four incarnations of Triumvirate, the three or four incarnations of Band of Brothers. Goonswarm's on number two right now, you know. Yep. Uh, it feels like the same basic people, and it has for years now, but... Um, with CCP's efforts over the past year and a half or so, we're starting to see things like Brave and Hero. Uh, and, and Brave's uh, only growing. Like, yeah. Brave has, I mean, they've had to raise the uh, Corp and Alliance caps because of Brave alone. Yeah. I mean, when I saw Test get to, I think we were at 12,000 members, I thought, wow, yeah. that's, that's, that's as big as a as a, an Alliance could ever get. And yeah. then Brave has just taken that number and been like, Pfft. yeah. Like, it's just blown it out of the water. It's it, crazy. It's really heartening, is what it is. I, I, you know, for the longest time there, I assumed that it was just going to be a very slow decrease until Eve died. But yep. they figured out a way to actually get people to come in and stick. And yeah. That's and that's exciting. Thing. Yeah. It's always cute to see the little newbies in their ships. And I show Bob about the days when I was that adorable. And yeah bad and terrible and Wait, I mean I'm still that bad days? and terrible oh, yeah I know. Okay. I'm still that bad and terrible <laughs> says the girl who didn't know you had to turn on your security buttons to shoot in low sec yes well you know uh, at the very least you made it into low sec so I did mm. I just jumped right favor. when I started playing I jumped right into into null sec I was nice. just like let's do this let's yeah. fight stuff I don't know what I'm doing yeah that's what I did too it's the right way to play I agree um so, yeah, uh, jumping forward, uh, the next thing we want to talk about was, of course, the CSM. Yes. How exciting we is the CSM, which is one of those things that uh, a lot of people avoid talking about because uh, when you look at our articles about the CSM, our, our viewership plummets. I don't know. They get pretty passionate. Some of them do. Some of them do, that but if you look at our article, numbers, yeah. that's... But that wasn't purely about the CSM, that was about controversy and drama, right? Yes, but I mean, yeah, okay, I take your point. The CSM in and of itself is not sexy, but no. everybody has an opinion on it. Everybody, everybody has, does. Yeah. Uh, and to state my opinion, so everybody knows, uh, let's, let's do this, and then you can state your opinions. It's like, it's, it's like we're talking about things. Um, so, I mean, obviously we have all our candidates in... Um, and, you know, I've read through some of them, and I'm like, okay, this is cool. Uh, like, there's always those those couples, people in the CSM, those candidates who throw in their name just to be like, LOL, look, I'm on the CSM yeah. ballot. I'm so cool, right? Yeah. Um, which I'm always like, oh, my God, Jesus, okay. 
Um, the reading Scion's articles, um, you know, the things that he's posted on um, the things that he's said, you know, I, there's a point there that I have to agree with him on. Um, he says that uh, what we've uh, made the CSM into so far, both as a council, both as council members and as players, is nothing short of a failure of imagination and ambition. Um, and that's a direct quote from his article, and I completely agree with it because someone asked me the other day, you know, when are you putting your name into the ring for the CSM? And I was like, never. Yeah. And and what well, the reason I say never is because yeah, it's cool. I get my name up in shining lights. People are like, oh, Nystrix running for CSM. Everyone vote for Nystrix. And then I get on this council, and then I'm like, that's cool. I know nothing about Eve. Let's yeah, do this. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the CSM could be something that's so great, and it could be awesome, and it could have so much valuable input, and it could be more than just a PR stunt and a media funnel and a name, and it's it's not yeah. any of... It, it's not... It doesn't really do anything, and it makes me sad, because I know that there's a lot of people that get onto the CSM and want to do stuff. Yeah. Well, I think there's... um. The CSM does do some things, you know. It does. CCP, every year when they have a CSM election, they do their big dev blog where they ask, uh, they ask, Sorry. you're good, where they ask all the devs, like, how has the CSM helped you this year? And last last year's one was actually pretty, pretty solid. Like, you know, the thing is, the problem with it is what you do depends entirely, you can put in all the input on in the world, but... You are dependent on CCP for the information. Absolutely. And CCP has a choice whether to accept your suggestion. You can be an amazing CSM and accomplish nothing because you got shot down every time. Uh, it's it's unpaid consultant work. It's right. very difficult. And oh, I believe it. you don't come back with much to show for it. So there's, there's a lot of reasons why people leave right. the CSM embittered and maybe a little bit uh, uh, disappointed with it. At the same time, I, I, I think Scion... I agree with your quote uh, that Scion had. Um, it is it is something that needs to be built up. I think it's... Um, I agree. It's, it was a very... Uh, like, it was... The, the creation of the CSM was a response to a scandal. It was right. a, okay, let's take care of this, let's give the players something... Um, what authority, what knowledge the CSM has now, they've had to take bit by bit, piece by piece, in procedural steps over the past, you know, seven or eight years. Um, so it's it's no surprise that the CSM still doesn't have a lot of the uh, authority or power or influence that it should have. Well, I mean, and on top of that, I mean, <laughs> I understand at, on the flip side of the coin, like where CCP is coming from, where they want CSMs input and like okay this is what we're thinking you know you guys play this game and are you know engrossed in what's going on right. tell us what you think but then ccp has shared information that they don't really want out there yet and then someone turns around and goes lol look what i learned from yeah. ccp today here's my media piece lol lol here you go yeah. um so i mean that doesn't inspire much confidence if you want the csm to be something important ccp and people of even in the csm have to work together to make it something and so far it seems like there are a few that want that to happen and they're struggling yeah. against the majority who just see it as a way to get information out of ccp yeah. and put it on any media outlet that will listen or uh, as a PR platform or as a um, sort of a, a ribbon you can wear hey i was on the csm i'm important it's, right. I don't know. It's um I don't know. It's a body that's really very much in flux right now. I think you can tell from all the stuff that's come out of CSF9 in the last few weeks and months that there's a lot of internal disagreement over exactly what the body is for, what it should be trying to become. Um Yeah, Zorali we'll makes a good point. Uh, out of the 77, he's, he's, I think he's right. I think it's set between 75 and 77 candidates. There's like four or five of them. And I'm like, wow, they have, they're, they're, they're great. Yeah. All of these guys or something. The rest of them, I'm just like, okay. Mm -hmm. But like, why are you bothering? <laughs> it's a social club that gets to have its opinions heard every once in a while. Right. That's pretty much the extent. And I understand the desire to want it to be more. At the same time, I kind of understand CCP's stance of, you know, 
hey, a bunch of people who play our game elected Joe Schmo. I don't want to tell him about the upcoming, you know, right, Super Joe Titan. Schmo. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true, and I think that's why, uh, especially with the minutes, you know, we talked about the lack of content that came out of the minutes, um, yeah. and I think a large part of the reason for that is just that at the time, obviously, we know through various media outlets that there's been a bit of, there was drama, and that I imagine a lot of those NDAs were put there in place specifically so that they could be like, we want to release this on our own time, please don't say anything yet, right, we're not ready. Right. Which I can appreciate. I mean, from, uh, you know, I, I used to do a lot of art and I used to write a lot. And mm -hmm. the worst thing for me was when someone would be like, what are you doing? What are you reading? And grab my book or, you know, and be like, yeah. this is dumb. Well, it's not finished yet. Fuck off. Of yeah. course it's stupid. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. So, I mean, I get yeah. I get where they're coming from. but And yeah. I get where the players are coming from and I get where the CSM is coming from. And it's, it's a really hard position. It's a, it's a tangled mess and, you know, you need somebody... The CSM, the thing is, there's no, like, really authority figure anymore. There's no there's no um, chairman of the CSM anymore. That position was abolished. So it's just a oh, body. Right. Um, and there's, you know, the, the person who uh, at CCP works with the CSM is just there to facilitate things for them and try to get them information. And if she, she or she can't get them that information, then, okay, we move on. But uh, mm -hmm. so there's no, like real driving force in it as an institution right now and i think that if we are going to see change it is going to be because someone who's very good at politics spaceship politics whatever you want to call it or someone within ccp who has a, a crazy idea one of those two is going to come in and revolutionize the institution but until that all happens right. i think we're just going to keep drifting you know what's ironic about all this is i started this discussion by saying that when people talk about the csm people go away. And our viewers have actually gone up since we mm. started talking about the CSM, so that's exciting. Yes, let's talk about the CSM more. You go. Um, I don't, I think I've exhausted everything I want to say. I mean, I the, the, the TLDR of just, just that, I just, I hope the CSM becomes something that actually has valuable input as yeah. far as CCP design goals and ideas go, because I mean, some of the players really have valuable things to say, and like I said, yeah. they're engrossed in the culture, they're engrossed in the game, you know, they really, they see it every day, and if CCP says, well, this is what we want to do with Sov, then a player can go, you know what, that's not going to work, and here's why, because IFC, and I am a logistics person, and this just isn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's been a little disturbing, the things that I've heard about, you know, um, the CSM getting, like, a day to look at changes before they go out to the forums. Yeah. Um, and the feedback from the forums, you know, not that this is necessarily a bad thing, but uh, Fozzie will put out, hey, we're rebalancing ship X. And he'll put up the thread, and five, like, like ten hours later, he'll have another post based on reactions in the forum uh, with stuff that's already been tweaked and changed. Right. That's the sort of stuff that should be before the CSM, well before that point, so that they can... I agree. It's, um... I mean, it's even if you don't look at the CSM in an ambitious way, you're fine with it just being a consultative body that just looks at what CCP gives them and says, hey, that's good, or no, this won't work, here's why. The only way that works is if CCP actually is communicative. So Absolutely. Well, I mean, and you take out a lot of that work, like, if you go into the CSM and you say, here's our idea, a lot of the things that people say on the forums, the CSM would have already said. Yeah, yeah. And then you actually get, so then you, so then you release your, this is what we want to do, what does everyone think about it, and then suddenly people are like, okay, here's, like, the two or three things that the CSM didn't think about instead of the 80 things that the yeah. CSM would have already told yeah. you, you know? Because these, like I said, most of these people actually really do understand EVE. Yeah. Not all of them, but a large majority of them, mm -hmm. so... And it's pretty easy to tell, uh, in retrospect, who the vanity candidates are and who the hard workers are. <laughs> it's very quick to, to find out, out. Yeah. yeah. That tends to come out. But, uh, I guess I'm hopeful about the future. At the very least, uh, there's at least more open discussion about what the CSM is now and what it needs to be. Um, but we'll just have to see. So, going to go a little off script here, and one last thing before we move on to other games. Uh, so, FanFest is three weeks, two weeks away? Yes. Um, any any idea of what's going to be the big reveal? Do you think it's going to be something with Jovians or Sov or both? 
What do you What do you think? I think that we are uh, when they initially initially announced that they're going to be uh, working on Sov, and they created the Sov Working Group, uh, which had Falcon and a bunch of other people in it, Fozzy, um, Null Arbor, I think. Uh, back in October, that they they said that the next stage uh, after the um, uh, Sov structure HP and the um, uh, distance nerfing happened, the next stage would be in the first quarter of 2015 february march ish so i think that yeah i think that we're going to be seeing the new uh soft system come out of fan fest i think it's due i think that they're probably pretty settled on what it's going to look like um i think they're yeah yeah fingers very very much crossed but if anything is big enough to be announced on the stage at fan fest in iceland it's a soft revamp I mean, I'd be happy to see something else about Jovians. Um, yeah. There was a speculation article uh, released on com, and I actually thought it was uh, a really interesting read. I'm just going to link it uh, because, I, like I said, I thought it was uh, just things that I hadn't thought of, like maybe that the Jovians will play a part in this Sov revamp. Uh, right. One of the ideas that I think he came out with was that, uh, like, and kind of a cheap way for... Uh, uh, CCP to get around the Sov thing is to just be like, so Jovians are coming in and attacking everyone's space, right? Well, now Jovians are just taking away all your space! Ta-da! <laughs> Which I think would be hilarious yeah. and Everybody terrible. Everybody goes back to high sec. Um, and then the other thing they were talking about, one of the speculation things we were talking about on the meta show, was uh, the issue of uh, maybe they'll announce that there's new space, uh, like Jovian yes. space, for people to take. And then the other counter issue that was brought up was, okay, that's great, but will it be worth anything? Because the mm. lack of content right now in EVE stems from lack of worth in Nullsec. Conflict drivers, yeah. All of the SOV is, well, I shouldn't say all, but all of the SOV that is readily easy, easy to take is worthless. Yeah. All the best no stuff one is wants locked it. down by the big coalitions. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No one wants it because it's not worth anything. So it's either up to CCP to make a huge sweeping change and completely rebalance the way moons work, or bring in these new, bring in this new Sov, yeah, and make sure that it's definitely worth taking, or wipe the map in some way, shape, or form yeah. and rebalance at the same time. Like there's, I don't know, even with a new Sov change, that's great that you're bringing in a new way to. To, to, to change Sov and to drive conflict and to drive interest and intrigue and whatever else, mm. but it's got to be worth something. You can't yeah. just create new Sov. If you just create new Sov with the same structures and the same idea with the same moons, like, no one's going to give a shit. Yeah. At the same time, there are, I mean, there are a lot of ways a gold rush scenario like that could go wrong. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's a little dangerous. At the same time, if you just created another slice of space that was just about as valuable as all the other space that exists in Nullsec right now, you would, you know, it, it'd get a portion between the people who care about it and probably fought over as little as the rest of Sov is. It's, <laughs> yeah, know, we'll have you to do? see. We'll um, have to see. Yeah, but I'm, I'm optimistic. I think, if anything, uh, when it comes to the Jove uh, and Jove space, I doubt we'll ever get to occupy it. Maybe it'll be more NPC Nullsec. But I think um, what CCP seems to be heading towards is players getting the technology to build jump gates from the Jovians. Right. And that could shake up Sov very much. Um, that would be cool. Being able to create and possibly even destroy jump gates, that would be a whole new tangle for Sov. Um, I think that would make it fun, for sure. Yeah, well it could, but it just depends on what CCP does in the next few months. Yeah. So uh, our last sort of large topic up for discussion are other games. Uh, we always like to try to to get all the Eve news out of the way and talk about some other stuff. Um, so we'll start with, uh, we spoke about it, I guess, two, three weeks ago now. Uh, obviously, as everyone knows by now, I hope, uh, SOE uh, became Daybreak Gaming. Rest in peace. Yes. Uh, so that's unfortunate. And uh, as a lot of us suspected, um, you know, there were layoffs involved in that uh, buyout. No, not Arcade. Nothing interesting has happened in Arcade. <laughs> um, uh, 
So, I mean, it's kind of old news that the layoffs happen, um, but it's to be expected when a company yeah. uh, is bought out by another company. I was surprised that they are still going to maintain all of the games from everything that I've heard. Uh, at least something like half, maybe uh, maybe at, at least a third of the staff at SOE slash Daybreak has been let go, uh, including some really big names. Um, EverQuest, longtime community manager... Um, lead designer on Planet Side Two. It's a, uh, it's a pretty bad blow to the company. Um, That's unfortunate. Yeah, but at the same time, um, at least they're maintaining all of the games. I was uh, gonna say it looks like they've kept around just enough to keep everything functioning. Yeah, and it, presumably uh, still expanding. H one Z one. I think they have a lot riding on of the, on that. Um, I agree. Planet Side Two may have taken the harder of the hits given that its lead designer had to leave. I don't know. Um, PS2 only recently became profitable in the past six months, so it seems strange that they would gut it, but at the same time, it probably has really high operating costs. Uh, I was going to say, they're probably... Lo- I'm hoping, and I mean, obviously we don't know for sure, but I'm hoping that they're looking to just get more people to really... Like, they're looking to get better people. The reason for the let goes was to find people who really are going to bring these games up yeah. for for the company and really start making them super profitable. Because, I mean, these well, are good the games. For them. They're, they're an investment uh, corporation. They want the money to flow properly. I don't think uh, H1Z1 is garbage. Um, I think that it has value. Uh, Schwab Boy says that it's, uh, says it's garbage. I actually think it's pretty good. Um, I enjoyed the uh, Battle Royale mode. I think oh, yeah. that's what it's called. Uh, that's actually a lot of fun. Uh, you get like 200 people in an, in an arena, and then you just have to fight to survive everybody. That's pretty awesome. Um, it is pretty awesome. Uh, it's probably the most streamed mode mm-hmm. um, of all of them so far that I've seen. Uh, I don't. I think the actual gameplay mode... Like, the actual game itself. Survival on the servers, yeah. yeah. Not all that interesting, but the Battle Royale mode, definitely a lot of fun. Uh, mm-hmm. It's different. It's kind of like a Hunger Games-esque thing, because they stick you in this arena, and then as the numbers start to whittle down, they start to put, like, this poison into the arena to shove you all <laughs> into the middle to force you to fight each other. Uh, that's and if clever. You, and if you don't have, like, a jeep or a car... If you don't find one, it's really difficult to get to the center before the the like the poison like comes in and takes over. It's it's kind of fun. It's yeah. kind of silly. It's kind of stupid. I mean, like you make alliances with people, mm-hmm. and you're like, don't worry, we'll be like the last two. And then like when there's four people left, you just shoot them in the head because you're like, <laughs> fuck it. Like yeah. it's it's kind of fun. Uh, it's silly. It's it's an interesting mode. Um, I hope that H1Z1 does better yeah. um, because I think that it could be. Be not that bad. Battle I, Royale. I'm, I'm still optimistic about it, honestly. And I, I haven't played Battle Royale. I've just spent two or three hours in the survival mode. And I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I think yeah. the problems that it has right now are problems relating to the fact that it's an extremely early, early access alpha. Yep. Um, the base underlying systems are, I think, more enjoyable and more intuitive and more responsive than uh, something like DayZ. Just a survival game not being based on the Arma 2 engine is a... It's a breath of fresh air. Like, thank God yeah. you got away from the <laughs> interactive on that. But, um, I mean, you bring up a good point, though. This is a game that's... I think it's already really well done, and Astronautistic also says, you know, it looks better, it's less buggy than Daisy, and it's an alpha. Daisy yeah. is out. It's a game. Like, yeah. it's out. This is an alpha game. I mean, obviously, everyone can, like, pretty much just, like, get into it. Like, it's not hard. But, you know... Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm optimistic about it. Uh, I I thought that uh, zombie games <laughs> were pretty much done. Uh, so when I heard about the announcement of this, I first off the name is dumb. H1Z1, really. And then, I get oh, it. A zombie Do you not get it? Daisy. Re- yes, I get it. Okay. I still think it's dumb. Oh, okay. I thought, <laughs> I thought it was clever. I'll just sit in my oh, clever bubble. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. It, okay. It's very clever. It's fine. It's a- Yes, yes, that was it. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. Um, but uh, no, it's. I'm actually optimistic about it. Of all of uh, SOE's, or sorry, Daybreak's games. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to use to that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Planet Side 2, I think, may have peaked recently. Um, I hope not. I've seen a lot more people playing it recently. I've really? heard of a lot of my old friends like going back to play it. 
So, and I know that I plan on actually giving it a giving it a whirl. So that's good to hear. Uh, it's it does have the advantage of like Eve being a unique experience for you sure. Uh, I like the idea. Who, yeah, exactly. There are people who are always going to play it because there is no alternative. So. Nope. I don't know. Sorry, my lips are really dry. It's really dry here. It's fucking with my sinuses. My hands are cracking. My nails are breaking. It's awful. I hate everything. <laughs> my uh, sinuses I'm hate me. You. Oh, my um, God. They're so bad. That's why I'm sniffling. Sorry for everybody for the constant uh, sniffles. Do I need um, to switch it over to the technical difficulty screen? Oh, God, no. We're fine. <laughs> um... So the other, there's two two other things, really. The other thing that uh, I know that you can talk about, because I personally don't play Elite Dangerous because I'm broke and don't, well, I mean, I'm not broke, but I don't. You don't want to throw down 60 bucks for it? I looked at Evolve and I really want to play it, but it's 70 fucking dollars, and I was like. Yeah, no thank you. What? Mm. I can't, what? Like, I just can't, I want to play it, it looks great, it looks interesting, I mean, I've heard a lot of things about, you know, certain monsters and certain classes being overpowered, but that's right. always, you know, an ongoing balance issue that you'll see in any game Especially of that style. Especially soon after release. Right. Yeah. Exactly, so I mean, those are things that I expect, and I think that once you get a couple patches out, uh, and everything kind of um, worked out, and all the bugs, and the Hopefully their balance team is better than Riot's, Blizzard's, right. and every other balance team, because, so. Well, I mean, original Left 4 Dead, which was by Turtle Rock, had pretty solid balance from the beginning. There was just a few, like, crazy things you could do that were exploits that it took a while for them to fix. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm optimistic when it comes to Evolve. I'm not really interested in it. I put, like, 300 hours into Left 4 Dead, and now 4 versus 1, or 4 versus 4, like... That whole idea just, just feels played out to me. The whole genre, I guess. Yeah, um, I understand. But it looks really good, and I'm optimistic about it. Turtle Rock so, for people. Elite Dangerous. Uh, the actual yes. game we were supposed to offer. So it got a patch. It got its big patch, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you played it? Not since the patch, but... Uh, You're I did... Oh, there you go. There you go. It fixed. You're right? good. Go, right? go ahead. Right. Okay, Sorry. deep breaths. Um... Uh, it, I have heard many good things. Uh, I did, uh, when I was at PAX South a few weeks ago, I happened to talk to Eddie Simons, who is uh, a producer on Elite Dangerous, and talked to him oh, okay. a little bit about it. Um, that must have been exciting for you. Yeah, actually. It was pretty interesting. Uh, good guy. Um, he, we talked a little bit about the patch, uh, Wings, at the time okay. is what it was referred to as, um, which basically made it easier for you to do... Now you can do missions cooperatively with your friends. Uh, it makes it easier for you to link up in space. Uh, the game was very much like... Like, before Wings, it was basically a single-player game that happened right. to be in an open multiplayer world. So if you, <laughs> if you encountered other players, it's not like the game would point them out to you in any particular way. It would just be a thing that happens. Uh, but Wings, I think takes advantage of what the players want, which is to go out there and be, you know, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker and just be, you know, a space gang and do things together. Uh, so you're getting a little bit more of uh, the Eve appeal into Elite, which I like. There you go. Um, so hopefully that'll draw more people into it. Yeah, I, from what I can tell, Elite is a big success, uh, Elite Dangerous. Although it's weird, they... They're hiring people at one um, location of theirs and firing them all in another, and I guess that's pretty typical for, um, you know, redistributing your resources after you've made your big release. The life uh, of being a game dev. Yeah, I do not envy them. Nope. Not an easy uh, place to work. But uh, I, the game itself looks pretty healthy, and uh, I'm optimistic about the future. That's good. Um, so the other thing that uh, I personally wanted to talk about, uh, for those of you that are not into League of Legends, uh, I guess I'm sorry, but here we go. You get to um, watch me so, drink. Yeah, so there was a lot of controversy uh, over this last, I guess, week and a bit uh, about um, there's this guy who's been streaming on Twitch, uh, and he's been spectating Faker's game and streaming them on Twitch TV, which you think, okay, that's no big deal, right? That's cool. Um, but apparently it is a big deal because Zubu has a contract with uh, KESPA, which is the Korean Esports Association, mm. and um, with uh, Faker's team, SK Telecom, that they are 
that that Faker and SKT are supposed to stream exclusively to Zubu, um, which is cool. You know, those contracts exist. Um, I know that there's contracts, or at least there were. I don't know if there are anymore uh, in NA uh, for uh, LCS for them specific streamers to stream to different platforms. Um, that includes Twitch exclusivity or Hitbox exclusivity, etc. Um, and that's all well and good. Uh, but someone on their own client, on their own league client, because in league you can go in and you can, if you have someone added as a friend or anything else, you can spectate them. Uh, even if you don't, I think there's another way to do it. I'm just not sure exactly the specifics. You can right. spectate and then it, it's about, I think it's about three minutes behind and you watch their gameplay. And you can move your camera and you can do whatever you want and watch specific people, whoever you want to watch. So this guy's been doing it with Faker's games and Faker's like a big... He is the mid laner. He is just god tier, amazing, whatever, right? So recently Azubu actually got the stream, the, the Spectate Faker stream taken down, uh, claiming DMCA. <clears throat> so they claim copyright, essentially, on the content. Um, which you're like... Do you, uh, Zubu, yeah. you don't technically own this content. This is a video game of someone streaming. Like, I don't, you know, a lot of people were like, okay, uh, all right. Um, and this yeah. is a big controversy because um, it muddies the waters about who really owns content, especially as far as Riot games are concerned and like streaming and, and all that stuff. So if Faker and Azubu and Kespa have the ability to say, well, that's Faker's game, you can't stream that. Well, what about the nine other people Faker is playing with? If what if one of them is streaming, they have to go, Faker, I'm streaming this on Twitch. Yeah. Can I have your permission to do so? Like, that's his game too, right? Ooh, what that's, a that's, mess. That's, that's as much that other guy's game as it is Faker's game, oh my right? God. Yeah. So it's a little silly. And then you bring up into this into this issue of, uh, you know, who's allowed to stream what and who really owns this content. In Riot's terms of service, the words, you shall have no ownership or other property interest in your account... You acknowledge and agree you have no claim, right, title, ownership, or other property interest in the game assets. And yet these and players you click, are signing and you click, contracts with streaming agencies for the game. Yeah. Right. I mean, for them to say that they will exclusively stream on one thing, that's their prerogative. Right. And Riot is the only person that is allowed to come in and say yes or no. There's... For Azubu to come in and say, no, that is our content? No, 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 no. Yeah. That belongs to Riot alone. If Riot comes in and says, you know what? They signed the contract. We, we acknowledge these contracts. We support these contracts. That's a little bit of a different story, but maybe they want to look at uh, modifying their terms of service if the case is, is that Riot supports yeah. these, these streaming bodies and these contracts. Because these contracts can be made and Faker himself can stream to Zubu exclusively, but the issue here is that Faker is not streaming to Twitch. This guy that is streaming, he's not even like, it's not like he's opening Zubu, watching the Zubu stream, and then streaming it to Twitch. He's using his own client, his own game, his own spectate mode to stream what someone is streaming. Yeah. And I do it all the, or stream what someone is playing, even if they're not streaming it, which I know friends that do it all the time, and so obviously it's not an issue because we're bronze and no one gives a shit. Um, but I mean, it brings into whole That's it a kind really of thorny legal issue there. Uh, it it is a really thorny legal issue, and I'm gonna link a video um, because uh, there's a guy that can explain this video or explain this issue in a video much better than I can, of course, um, and it kind of highlights the issues here in. Uh, yes, the League Faker debate, always. It's important because it brings into light the issue of esports and, you know, who owns the stream, who's allowed to stream, and all that all that silly yes. stuff, right? Yes, the stuff that is going to be worth many, many millions <laughs> of dollars, or already is. Exactly. And we still haven't figured out the freaking legal background to it. Like, basic stuff. This is basic stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, the issue is, I mean, this guy, this guy who's streaming Faker, he makes no money. Yeah, he's not monetizing on Faker's stream, which if he were, then I could see it. If he were making money on Twitch by streaming someone, uh, you know, all that stuff, then I could see it. Um, you know, but if he's not monetizing. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of discussion. There's a huge Reddit thread. I'm also gonna post that because if I talk about it much more, we're going to stretch this show. 
into ungodly lengths because yeah. it's a huge debate and it's just it's been going on for like a week and a bit now and it's just it's so much so I'm just gonna go ahead and link the reddit thread because there's a big mega reddit thread because people are awesome and just are like here you go here's all of it just knock yourselves out to be clear <coughs> we are not lawyers and we don't have a site on this it's just a big debate that's going on right now there are esports lawyers who have come out uh, and talked about the nature of of the issue and what that, um, what not. Uh, apparently, Faker has come out and said, um, I want this taken down, but there's not, there hasn't actually been a confirmation of that. Uh, someone come out and said, you know, Faker actually doesn't want this streamed on Twitch. He said he doesn't want anyone spectating and streaming his stuff. Um, and then SK Telecom, his, his company, his team, the ones that he worked for also came out and said, you know, this isn't really a thing that you should be doing, but at the end of the day, there is no legal justification backing up any of these claims, and I'm not even really sure if Faker himself has come out and said it. There's just companies and big up there people who are saying Faker mm -hmm. said this. Um, so, it's, it's, knows? I don't really know, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, uh, I think that it's a whole bunch of bullshit, because uh, like I said, Riot's Terms of Service clearly state you have no right to any of this content and that you no one owns any of it which means Azubu has no right especially to say that it's copyrighted to take it down on DMCA to say this is our content no 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 it's not your content it's either Faker's content or it's Riot's content that's it yeah well we'll just have to see how it shakes out it's yeah and then Hellaman brings up a good point uh, someone like the co-owner of Riot coming out and making false statements. I had a lot of my friends on Facebook and Twitter uh, over these last couple days saying, how is it that a Riot employee is able to say stuff like this? Don't they have to go through like training about mm -hmm. what they're saying in, in public? And the answer is they do. Riot employees, before they get a fancy Riot tag, go through training. Yeah. Right? So they should know what things are and are not allowed to be said. Obviously, if you're a Riot employee, you probably shouldn't be lying to your to your players. Yeah. Uh, We've been seeing a lot of um, unfortunate incidents in that vein lately. With Nico Snow over at MWO, uh, community managers. Uh, I mean, you normally you expect a community manager to be a step above like your vol volunteer community uh, forum manager type person. But actually um, being misled or being derided by... Uh, the community manager, the employee, it's uh, it's unfortunately more and more common nowadays, and it's not yeah. a good thing. Yeah, and it's it's um, riot. This this actually this is a good uh, this is a good uh, a quote. Uh, riot has announced that it plans to protect high profi profile uh, professional League of Legends players from the rising threat of digital stalkers. So, from from this point of view. This is this is a different point of view, you know, saying that this guy's a stalker. He is he is, you know, stalker. actively pursuing Faker to to get something out of like like stalking Faker. Like that's not what's happening. Yeah. I don't think personally. Um, it's it's really silly. And like I said, Shwo boy, uh, this guy who's streaming Faker, not making any money off of his stream. He's doing it just because. Which I think is fine. If he's not monetized, I think the issue becomes non-existent, except from, like uh, Hellman said, a, a moral perspective, which is how everyone's trying to spin it. Morally, this is wrong, and you really shouldn't be doing this, trying to guilt this guy into taking his stream down. And he's come out and said, unless Riot issues an DMCA, fuck off. Yeah. No. Which I agree with his standpoint. I completely agree. And I think that is bullshit that people are trying to push this guy and bully this guy. And taking his stream down for for legal reasons, which they have no they have no legal ground to stand on, from what I can tell. Like I said, like you said, we're not lawyers. Obviously, we can't we can't say for sure. But it seems like the esports lawyers, esports lawyers. It seems like you know the community. Everyone I know, or I know everyone. All the esports journalists. They all say that um, there's no legal ground really yeah. here. For, their, for for people to be standing on, but they are they are nonetheless. Uh, hold on, Helen just linked something. I'm gonna figure out. Oh, that's a that's why did it? 
Uh, let me copy and paste that for you there, Hellman. Yeah. It's, um, I think a lot of it, uh, it has to do with the fact that this is so much like, um, like uncovered ground, uh, you know, things like, like if there's a rights issue over like sports footage in the U.S., it's the NFL's ownership. The CBS doesn't get to say, oh, only we are allowed to broadcast this game. Uh, your contract with Fox doesn't, doesn't, it's a, it's a null contract now. Exactly. Because there are so many precedents. The problem is there aren't any precedents when it comes to Twitch and game streaming and what is stalking versus what is observing and right. It's if a I huge wanted, mess. and it's one of those issues where I want on Twitch. I literally religiously watch Piglet and Odd One. So am I a digital stalker? Yeah, maybe you are. I, I think that makes me a digital stalker. I think I'm I not see sure a though. Madness in your eyes. And then uh, same thing with like Snoop A. I do, like I. I, I'll believe me. I, I stalk the fuck out of him. I've got him on like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> everything. He's just I. I love Snoop Dogg. He's great. He doesn't even play much anymore, but I still have him on everything. Like, right. I guess if that They're makes me a stalker, yeah. I mean, to me, they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, you can you can follow someone on like like would what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that celebrities and these basic people basically are celebrities for a new generation. Uh, you can't be a, a stalker of like Miley Cyrus because you follow her on Twitter a, a lot, or whatever. You know, right? It's like I don't know. Stalking. I think there is a case to be made in very narrow cases that people can be harassed online. That is a real thing. Right. Like but if that this is guy was from yeah yeah yeah. If this guy had like faker added on everything, was like faker. Oh my god, notice me, senpai. Like yeah, some yeah, people yeah. do. Some I mean, boy. people do that here to Laz. Yeah, yeah. Are they digital stalkers? Like, I don't... What the fuck, man? I don't know. It's a whole bunch of legal jargon bullshit, and I think that it's really... Like, and and I agree with uh, Species. It all, like, it boils down to your intentions. Do you follow just because you like them, or is there another reason? I mean, and I think for everyone involved, there are probably other people that are creepy and do have malicious intent and whatever. I don't think this, this, this spectate faker dude on Twitch does. I, I really don't. I mean, he doesn't profit from it in any way. He doesn't, like, there's no, there's no reason to suspect that he is stalking. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a little silly. And it, uh, I mean, it, it brings a lot of issues, I guess, and I agree with you, to an issue that should be, should have been flushed out. Something that should have already, in terms of service and in contracts, already been yeah. sorted out. And it's unfortunate now that Riot has to come across this, because now that Riot has to deal with it, now... The entirety of the esports scene has to deal with it. Now they all have yeah. to go in. Now that Riot has come across this and come up against this, Riot either sets the precedent or is the bad guy. Those all are those I know are their options. Is the lawyers are going to make a lot of money. Yep. Yep. Good times. Yep. Good times. Lots of lots of fun. Yeah. Uh what a mess. I know. Oh, I just dropped my phone. Rip. <laughs> Rest in peace, your phone. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, my my standpoint on it is there's no legal ground for anyone to stand on, and that's it. That's that's my standpoint. Obviously, like I said, all the info is in the Reddit thread. I'll post it one more time for you guys to make your own decisions. Don't take my word for it. Obviously, my word is like mm-hmm. eighth hand information, not even third or second. It's like eight people down the line information that I'm spewing at you guys. Um, the so, Reddit thread is 100% trustworthy, though, right? No, not at all. Oh. But it's got, but it's got information from original sources. Okay, I'll accept so. that. Oh God, don't even talk about network neutrality. I don't <laughs> want to. Like, just that that scares the ever loving fuck out of me. What that it was going to happen with this that bill? Podcast bill. for like another 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's go ahead. I think we're I think we're good on time. We are good on time. Hooray! We did it. We did it, Reddit. Um, so I want to thank everyone for listening to me ramble about this uh, uh, legal bullshit. And no, Reddit isn't legit. Interested. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Zarelli. Yeah. Reddit isn't legit. I'm sorry mm-hmm. that you have to learn the hard way. Um, if it was reddit.gov or reddit.edu, then you could take it seriously. But unfortunately, no. <laughs> That implies I take the United States government seriously. Oh, I'm sorry. Gov. Co.ca, whatever your I, filthy acronym. I don't. Is. I don't believe. I don't believe <laughs> ours either. I just believe it a little more than I do the U.S. Uh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. That's a fair point to make. I take that. 
I don't know. But uh, uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in today. Yes. Um, I hope you enjoyed our coverage. Hopefully we'll be back more consistently from now on. I apologize for the, the lapse in, in uh, TMZ Live. We yes. will be with you next week. Yes. Same time. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, guys.